Well, welcome everyone. We are uh, <clears throat> so glad that everyone's here and uh, we're able to have graduation tonight. And class of 2021, congratulations. I said this to the faculty. I said, you know, Lincoln said this. He said, you can complain because rose bushes have thorns or you can rejoice because thorn bushes has roses. You guys have taken advantage of this year in a way that really has accentuated the roses, not the thorns. And I'm grateful for each of you for having done that. Father Humans, will you please come forward and give the invocation? Tonight, I want to use the words of the prophet Hosea as our prayer. So the Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, let us know, let us press on to know you, Lord. For your coming forth is as certain as the dawn. And you will come. You will come like the spring rain that waters the earth. Amen. Thank you, Father Humans. Like I said, I'd like to welcome you to Cassidy School's 71st commencement. We are here today to honor you all, the class of 2021. We're excited to be able to gather today, although the crowd got smaller and a little bit smaller in the end. I am grateful for all of the people that made this graduation happen. To our maintenance crew, thank you so much. Can we give them a quick round of applause? <clears throat> we also want to welcome our faculty. Each of our faculty that processed in went to a different building and they're watching remotely right now. Finally, thank you to all of our extended family underclassmen and women, and faculty who, for the sake of this unique time period, are graciously watching this historic commencement online. While there are a few things that we're going to do differently, what will not change is we're going to focus on you. Tonight is about you, the class of 2021. So we'd like to take a moment to recognize two, before we get started, recognize two retiring faculty who we want to say thank you for their collective 65 years of teaching at our grade school. The first one is a longtime lower division teacher and former Cassidy student herself, Ms. Kathy White. Kathy's not able to join us tonight, but I'm sure she's watching live. And so let's give her a real big round of applause for her years of service. <clears throat> I would also like to ask that longtime primary division teacher, Ms. Karen Tolls, please stand. Please help me in saying thank you for her more than 30 years of service. Thank you, Karen. All right. The class oration this year is going to be given by Matthew McChristian. Come on up. For most of my freshman, sophomore, and junior years, I had pretty bad acne. <laughs> Every night, I went to sleep with a smorgasbord of topical creams and ointments on my face. And when I woke up in the morning for school, there were many days that I wished I could just show up to school wearing a mask. <laughs> well, be careful what you wish for. That said, I do not want this speech to be about the pandemic. COVID was not the only thing that happened to us this year, and it will not define our high school experience. For some of us, our Cassidy experience started long before high school. For the 20 some odd lifers who make up the backbone of the senior class, Cassidy served as the backdrop for practically every change they've experienced as a student, from toddler to child to puberty and into their teenage years. While I am not a lifer, I did begin my academic journey here 13 years ago in Ms. Chaudhry's pre-K class. And after a few detours, I returned in the large wave of students joining in ninth grade. Regardless of when you join the Cassidy family, we've all arrived at this day together. And trust me, as someone who's gone to six different schools in a little over a decade, the Cassidy family is unique. Here, rather than following the high school stereotypes, at Cassidy, the artsy kids are the athletes, are the musicians, are the leaders, are the scholars. Cassidy students, teachers, coaches, 
and administration are so welcoming and accepting that having to stereotype yourself as a way of fitting in or as a defense mechanism is simply not necessary. For example, I remember earlier this year sitting with Brennan Wade in the records building while he was working on a college application. He had to answer, how have your experiences, perspectives, and talents shaped your ability to contribute both in and out of the classroom? Brennan asked on a whim if I had any ideas. I said, well, here you are, football captain and reluctant quarterback, sitting here with Jack Love and Matthew McQuistian, two of the least involved members of Cassidy's athletic department. <laughs> At this moment, we are bridging the gap between Bennett Athletic Center and the record science building. And I think that speaks for itself, honestly. And Brennan is far from the only Cassidy student like this. The entire class of 2021 has evolved over the last four years. As freshmen, it felt like everyone was simultaneously trying to remain unseen while also trying to get the most attention. The halls of Hightower were always filled with the din of lockers being rummaged through and slammed, rife with pranksters sprinting from the scene of a successful locker bomb, usually at the expense of Cam Wallace. <laughs> and for those non-students, a locker bomb is when a group of your friends descends upon your, an unsuspecting locker, empties it of its contents, and hides your stuff you know not where. In fact, my most vivid memory from freshman year is of Cam, post locker bomb, standing in front of his empty locker with a combined expression of shock, wrath, and humor, as he eyed the only remaining item in his locker, one single opened container of cane sauce, <laughs> which seemed to be winking back up at him. Since then, and after many more containers of cane sauce, every one of us has changed and matured. We've gained a broader and more nuanced perspective, and have begun to cement who we really are. Senior year gave rise to new friendships, experiences, and memories that are irreplaceable. And despite the cliche, the last one really has been the best one. Still, I know I speak for most of us when I say that it's difficult to wrap my brain around the fact that come August, we will not be returning to high school. That lurking behind all the graduation excitement, there are still parts of the high school experience that we might regret not being a part of, chances we didn't take. We'll never get the chance to play that one sport, audition for that one part, take that one class, or go up and talk to that special someone we wished we could have known just a little bit better. But here's the thing, it's not over. Although we cannot repeat the last four years or ask for an extension or extra credit, the rest of our lives are still very much in our own hands. Every what if from the last four years, every chance not taken, is now a challenge and an opportunity for the next four. We will always be a part of the Cassidy community, and it will always be a part of us. But if we rise to the occasion, the next chapter of our lives will be just as great or even greater still. Think about it. Some of the closest friends we will ever have in our lives, we haven't even met yet. Every single member of the class of 2021 is intelligent, creative, hardworking, and most importantly, kind. These positive attributes will continue to shape and guide us through the rest of our lives. And in say 10 years, it will be so exciting to see how everyone has grown and truly started to make their mark on the world. In closing, I'd like to give some special thanks to people who have definitely made their mark on our world. I'd like to thank Mr. Sheldon and his team, all the faculty, and all the staff for managing the school so well in the face of unprecedented challenges. Through their hard work and creative problem solving, they gave us a very special senior year and showed us what grace under pressure looks like. So let's take that lesson to heart. Let's go out there and work hard, be creative, and make good things happen for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McQuistian. Well done. Several years ago, the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation gave a very generous grant to the school's endowment fund. The income earned each year is divided equally among the recipients and is in the form of a tuition grant awarded to the school or college where the recipients will be enrolled next fall. The Samuel Roberts Noble Scholars are the boy and girl in each class who have the highest numerical average for this academic year. 
At this point, we would like to recognize the 2021 Noble Scholar winners. I will announce the 9th through 11th grade recipients who are not present this evening. We will then ask the two seniors to stand and we will recognize them together with a round of applause. So the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation recipients in the ninth grade are Edward Kang and Noni Redding. The Noble Scholars in the 10th grade are Adi Bakhtaram and Michelle Huang. The Noble Scholars in the 11th grade are Fisher Moody and Shanta Ramdas. And now for the seniors, when you hear your name, would you please stand? So the Noble Scholar in the 12th grade are <laughs> Matthew McQuistian and Kate Richardson. Well done. I would now uh, like to ask Mr. Bottomley to come forward to present the next two awards. The Phi Beta Kappa Award is presented each year to that boy or girl in the senior class who has demonstrated superior scholarship over the last four years. This year, the Phi Beta Kappa Award is presented to Kate Richardson. The Summa Cum Laude Award was established by the late Right Reverend Thomas Cassidy and is awarded each year to that member of the senior class who has maintained the highest scholastic average throughout his or her high school years. This year, the Summa Cum Laude Award is presented to Matthew Diego Fernandez McQuistian. Speaking of Brown University, I would like to ask Mr. Gorham to come forward, please, to present the next award. The Ian Rennert Memorial Award is given in memory of Ian Rennert, class of 1987, and it is awarded to a senior who displays a fullness of vision which unifies, unifies and elevates their endeavors, whether they be academic, artistic, or athletic, beyond the scope of ordinary achievement. The 2021 Ian Renner Memorial Award is presented to Matthew Diego Fernandez McQuiston. I would now like to invite the Reverend Canon James R. Sorry, the, the Bishop Reed to please come forward uh, to announce our next awards. In memory of the Reverend Canon James R. Harris, former Comptroller of the Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma and longtime friend of Cassidy School, this award is presented to an upper division student who has made significant contributions to the Cassidy community, drawing from a spiritual commitment and expressed by repeated acts of thoughtfulness and service. The recipient has enriched our corporate life. It is a pleasure to present the 2021 James R. Harris Award to Ava Raquel Ranghal. The Heads of School Award. The Heads of School Award is given in honor of Stephen Gassaway, Michael Martin, Sean Kelly Jr., Howard Tabor, Robert B. Woolsey, Richard B. McCubbin, Barnaby J. Roberts, Mark H. Mullen, Charles W. Britton, Interim Head of School, David W. Gorham, Christopher C. Bright, and Nathan L. Sheldon 
whose leadership has built this great school. The award is given to a senior who has made a special contribution to the life and spirit of Cassidy School. The 2021 Heads of School Award goes to Madeline Grace Lister. I would now like to ask Janae Lister, board chair, to come and read several awards. The Cass uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong award. The Trustees Award is a permanent trophy of the school. It was established in honor of both past and present trustees in gratitude for devoted service to Cassidy School. This award is given to that student who by virtue of their character, loyalty, and service has made Cassidy a finer school. It is a pleasure to present the 2021 Trustees Award to Caroline Rose Hall. The Cassidy Award, named in honor of the late Right Reverend Thomas Cassidy, is a permanent trophy of the school on which are inscribed the names of the winners from year to year. This is the highest award of the school and is given to that student who in character, scholarship, leadership, and devotion has made the most outstanding contribution to the life of the school. The 2021 Cassidy Award is presented to Kate Ellen Richardson. Now I will turn it back to Mr. Sheldon. Thank you, Janae. It's my honor tonight to introduce our speaker this evening who will give the charge to you, our graduates. Kathy Keating is a fourth generation Oklahoman who has focused much of her life on her family and community service. A native of Tulsa, she graduated from the University of Oklahoma, married Frank Keating, had three children, and has embarked on the never-ending challenge of balancing life as a wife and mother and meeting the needs of the community and her career. While her priority has always been family first, she has left a mark in many areas. Some of her most notable contributions occurred while serving the state of Oklahoma as First Lady. Most, most specifically, her efforts were concentrated on the rescue and recovery of those affected by the Oklahoma City Alfred P. Murrah bombing, where Keating planned and organized the International Prayer Service, then published in their name, which was on the New York Times bestseller list. All the proceeds were directed to Project Recovery. In remembrance of the 25th anniversary last year, she and her husband Frank co-authored One with Love, the Oklahoma standard with all proceeds of that book directed to the Oklahoma City National Memorial. Also, while First Lady of Oklahoma, she implemented a grounds management program in partnership with Career Tech for female inmates to teach them a marketable job skill upon their release. Mrs. Keating is the recipient of several awards and has been inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and the Tulsa Hall of Fame. Additionally, she's been named an outstanding Southerner in Southern Living Magazine. She remains committed to making difference in the lives of others by serving in a variety of roles on numerous boards locally, nationally, and while keeping her family, including seven, grand, seven 11 grandkids, uh, making that her priority. Will you please join me in welcoming former First Lady Kathy Keating to deliver the commencement address. just in case. 
Thank you, Mr. Sheldon. Good evening, Cassidy, class of 2021 graduates. Among you are your parents, grandparents, friends, all the faculty, maybe here or Zoom, um, who have carefully nurtured your minds, challenged your talents, and helped de develop your character. It is my great honor to be with you this evening. This year in particular, as this past year has been like no other, and hopefully will be like no other in the future. Before I begin in earnest, I want to step back a zillion years to this night when our oldest daughter was sitting where you are sitting. Like you, like each of you, she had worked hard. She was prepared. She was ready to launch, and it was palpable. She had gotten back up when she failed, when she tripped. She'd overcome hurdles and uh, obstacles, disappointments, and failure. But she excelled. Does that sound familiar to each of you? For parents and grandparents, this is a bittersweet moment. Exhilaration and contemplation are intersecting. As our daughter was walking the stage to receive her diploma, I felt the tears rolling down my cheek, mostly tears of joy, and in my effort to hide them, I looked down, and my mother, who was sitting next to me, in her haste to get out the door, had put on two completely different pairs of shoes. So those tears quickly turned to giggles. The rest is history. This is a sentimental journey that each of you, including your parents, are on. So graduates, the moral to the story is be kind, gentle, and loving of your parents tonight. Be grateful for the sacrifices they have made on your behalf. This is a big day in their lives as well. The winds of change are bittersweet. Now, the world pivoted last year. We hit a revamp as country after country dealt with the devastation of COVID. Decisions were made that impacted everyone. Lives were lost, businesses failed, America's schools, businesses, and nonprofits turned to Zoom. Political unrest mounted, and the worst stresses of a nation touched every community. Each of you were affected in 2021, and will be, it will be permanently marked as a yardstick in your lives. 1995 was also a different but life-altering yardstick year for the lives of many in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the nation, and parts of the world. On a beautiful Oklahoma City April 19th day, a bomb exploded in front of the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building, killing 168 wonderful, innocent human beings, 19 of whom were children. Over 300 buildings were damaged or destroyed, and it remains the largest domestic terrorist act in American history. Our community was brought to our knees. The unimaginable evil of one man had devastated families in our community. America lost its innocence, and the world grieved with us. What unfolded was a response unlike any before, and the story that evolved is one of thousands of acts of kindness, of healing, of rebuilding, one where people helped people without regard to race, sex, nationality, or religion, where no one asked what your political affiliation was, and they helped regardless of whether you were rich or poor, where strangers helped us get back on, off our knees and onto our feet because we are e pluribus unum, from many one. People such as Rebecca Anderson, a nurse on her way home from an all-night shift in the hospital who came directly to the building to help others escape when a building fell on her, and she, part of the building, and she lost her life. Michael Laudenschlager, who survived the explosion, but went back into the building to help four other of his colleagues escape safely, but lost his life 
in the process of doing so. Our com um, first responders responded with a level of courage, bravery, and professionalism that was extraordinary, as did the community as well. Downtown Oklahoma City was evacuated. There was no rioting, no looting, no crime for days. The Bank of Oklahoma left all the money in their drawers, the vault open for 24 hours, and when they came back, not one penny was missing. The convention turned into an actual bed and breakfast for the first responders from Oklahoma City, from Oklahoma, from the FEMA teams, the federal emergency management teams from across the country, and available were 24-hour meals, a Walmart-type store with everything you might need imaginable, masseuses, doctors, counselors. Roses and mints were put on the pillars of the first responders. So when they came off the site, exhausted physically and mentally, they were greeted with a symbol of love, all for free and all by volunteers. We held a prayer service four days after the bombing, and the First Lady of Illinois sent teddy bears for the family members to be given each, to each family member as a symbol of her love and support. Those teddy bears started emerging on the fence surrounding the parameter of the building as a symbol of hope and healing, and they remain the symbol of hope and healing for disasters and tragedies, tragedies around the world today. People from all walks of life stepped up to help. One such man was on his way home from work after an all-night shift on a cold, rainy day that April when he heard on the radio a call for steel-toed work boots for the first responders. He diverted, went to the site, found a National Guardsman, took the boots off of his feet, and gave them to the National Guardsman saying, the first responders need these more than I. We experienced one community, one state, one America coming together. When the first FEMA team was departing, one of the team members came up to my husband and said, Governor, see this dollar bill? This is the dollar bill I brought with me. This is the dollar bill I haven't had to spend while, spend while I was here. Everything was free. There has never, ever been an experience like this, ever, anywhere. Well, that experience became known as the Oklahoma Standard, and they retitled the FEMA training manager management uh, training manual, the Oklahoma Standard, and it remains so today. These types of acts of kindness happened before, and they continue to happen every single solitary day of the year in our communities and our state. Now, why is this relevant to each of you? Because your parents and grandparents make up the Oklahoma standard. These are the genes from which you come, the foundation of your character, your roots and heritage. And from them and all those involved in the Oklahoma City bombings, rescue, recovering, healing, and rebuilding come these lessons. Tolerate others' differences and opinions while standing up for yours. You may be the first to accomplish something, but don't be the last. Always do what is right, even if it hurts. Be generous in your thoughts, words, and deeds. Show kindness. Be an uplifter. Take a risk to be great. Make a difference. You can change the world. 26 years ago, some people across the world had never even heard of Oklahoma. Some people in America didn't even know where Oklahoma was. But we in Oklahoma put the heart in heartland. And within weeks of the tragedy, the Oklahoma standard became one for which other tragedies and disasters are measured. That remains today. We became the standard bearers of ways to help our families and community respond to tragedies and heal. 
you too can build on the solid foundation of your past and be the standard bearers of the Oklahoma standard as you go forward. As, and as you go forward with your lives, your actions can help heal our communities, states, and country. You can change the narrow, nar narrative of silos and division that exist today. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Such is a time will you rise to the challenge. Finally, as you begin your next journey, never lose sight of who you are truly meant to be as you have worked hard to get there. I wish you Godspeed on your journey and my heartfelt congratulations to each of you on your accomplishments today. Kathy, thank you. Wonderful words. I now ask Ms. Joanne Infantino and Mr. Chris Halpern, senior class sponsors, to come up and read the names of the members of the class of 2021. We'd ask that the audience hold your applause until all diplomas have been granted, although that typically doesn't happen. <laughs> I read this every year, and you guys just ignore it. That's okay. All right, Mr. Halpern. Sophia Anig Rene Armudian. <laughs> Peyton Grace Bailey. Jaden Patrick Niafla Bampo. <laughs> Dylan Cody Barnett. Alexander Philip Barreto. Let's go, <laughs> Fahed Asif Beg. Olivia Claire Biggerstaff. <laughs> Colton Swain Brom. Ren Michael Brownlee. <laughs> Brian, 
Benjamin Harris Burke. Caleb Joshua Campbell. Natasha Mariam Chohan. Macy Shea Coat. Victoria Jane Cohn. <laughs> Zanis Ayana Crawford. Carter David Dawkins. Jackson Bennett DeGiusti. Sophia Quinn Dykstra. Charlie Connor Enderby. Darian Jamal Freeman. <laughs> Sydney Lauren Geiger. Matthew Robert Gelser. Sarah Ann Gibson. Caroline Rose Hall. Catherine Grace Hawley.
Carlos Paul Henry. Graham Sanzen Fantastic Jones. Jonathan William Jones. Gabriella Naji Karam. Abby Suzanne Kays. Jackson Paul Kennedy. George Christian Clonus. Vageli Vasili Clonus. Nora Bijou Kurian. Madeline Grace Lister. Connor James Little. Jack Ryan Love. James Bowman Lowe. Cade Ethan Lydic. Zane Ahmad Malik.
Matthew Diego Fernandez McQuistian. Princeton Ignatius Mitchell Johnson II. Isabella Rose Moore. <laughs> Elijah Salam Muhammad Jr. Madeline Abigail Newcomb. Lauren Bao Kim Nguyen. Tina Kien Win. <laughs> Nihal Patty. Libe Pan. Amal Intakhab Paracha. Isabella Hampton Pardo. Drake Ramsey Parsons. Edward Eladio Pascual Rosales. Oliver Cromwell Rogers Pointer.
Christian Spencer Powell. Eva Raquel Rangel. Evan Stewart Rout. Elliot Fry Rieger. Caden Edward Reynolds. Kate Ellen Richardson. <clears throat> Lucy Ann Richmond. Katherine Jane Russell. Olivia Grace Sears. Ellen Jane Schaefer. Sydney Renee Tidilio Shofala. Spencer Victoria Steele. Alexa Lynn Seiler.
Nikta Taheri. Jordan Marshall Turner. Mason Cruz Euland. Grace Margaret Oots. Brennan Charles Wade. Pierce Garnet Wade. Camden Russell Wallace. <laughs> Owen Max Weitzenhofer. Addison Meek Wildman. Lauren Elizabeth Williams. Cole Alexander Wolf. <laughs> Bilal Muhammad Zahur.
Last but not least, Conwy Zhang. You may now turn your tassels. And ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present the Cassidy graduating class of 2021. So I want to thank you again for holding your applause. Well done. <laughs> this is a special graduation, not only because of the year we've had and the incredible work you, you guys have done, but this is our first graduation with our new bishop. Bishop Reed, we're so glad to have you here today. And you have you witnessed the uh, commencement of 80 wonderfully talented individuals. As we close this 71st commencement today with our benediction, We'll ask that you remain seated until our seniors have left the seating area, and then they're going to do a lap around the lake, even though it's dark, and then we're planning to have the cap toss here uh, behind us. So just hold tight. They will come back around. They're going to go receive an applause from all their teachers, from pre-K all the way through to uh, upper division. Bishop Reed, will you come and give us the benediction? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, be present with us and especially with these graduates whom we honor tonight. Nurture and protect them as they leave the school and continue their journey of life. As they seek enlightenment through greater knowledge, help them to remember that you are the source of all wisdom. As they seek their path through this world and are tempted by many distractions, guide them with your loving hand. As they seek happiness, remind them that true fulfillment is found in serving others. As they seek success, fill them with gratitude for the many gifts they have been given by their families, friends, and teachers. And may your blessing be upon them this day and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Like a frisbee. Thank <laughs> you. 